Australia here at the ANU campus and at the Osaka and Baraki campus up here to Macon. You spend two years here at ANU, two years in Japan. Like I said, at the end of those four years, you'd end up with two bachelor's degrees. So it's a four-year program uh, for a full-time study. And the, the program will be taught entirely in English. So yeah, um, it's a, there will be opportunities to study Japanese if you don't have a background in Japanese language and want to pick that up. While you're studying at Ritz Amazing, you'll have some of that, that opportunity. Uh, but it will be a program taught in, in English, and you'll be working with colleagues from the ANU, but also colleagues from around the, the, the Asia-Pacific region. The program begins next semester. So semester one in 2019 is our first intake, and there are uh, mid-year enrollments in this program. So it's a program that starts in the first semester each year. We'll spend a year uh, here at ANU, we'll spend, go spend two years in Japan, and then come back and be here for, your, for the final year at ANU. Just a little video here. <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying something very important there. And of its making university in Japan to really bring together the strengths of these two institutions to create an amazing opportunity that will involve studying different countries, but also getting to take advantage of academics from two world-class institutions. One of the unique characteristics that students will experience in this degree is really the contrast between the two locations where the teaching happens. The ANU Parklight campus, but with close links to government here in Australia, which is also reflected in the departments in the School of Asia Pacific Affairs and that are teaching the degree. On the other hand, in Japan, you will be part of the student community in the big city of Osaka, um, in a university that's really reinterpreting traditional academic disciplines in a more Asian uh, context. The Bachelor of Asian Pacific Affairs will really draw on some of the strengths that, that ANU and College of Asia and Pacific have uh, already established. So if you're interested in issues around international relations, around diplomacy, strategic studies, and um, the opportunities that to really immerse yourself in the cultural understanding of Japan and Asia and the Asian Pacific region as a whole, these are exactly the sorts of things that this program is going to draw on. So talk a little bit about the structure of the program. Like I said, you'll have two different degree programs that you'll be take, undertaking simultaneously. So Tomo here will talk about the Bachelor of Global Liberal Arts in just a second. But with the Bachelor of Asia Pacific Affairs, it's really built around these four key uh, clusters, or four key pillars that build on the strengths that we have within the, the College of Asia and the Pacific. So politics and government, international relations and security, conflict and peace building, and history and cultural identity. And you can see here on the, the side, you can see the, the core courses that it'll take. So you'll do four introductory courses, you'll do four capstone courses. And like I said, these are courses that exist in other degree programs and really build on some of the strengths that we have already established here within the College of Asia and the Pacific and within the ANU writ large. So you, you get to have opportunities to take classes from world-class academics, people who really infuse their teaching with their own research, people who are helping to make some of these policies, and then get a chance to apply some of these, these ideas in some of the capstone courses that you'll take. But this program also is part of, the, because it's part of a dual degree program, you're also simultaneously undertaking this Bachelor of Global Liberal Arts. So I want to turn things over to Satomo so he can tell you a bit more about the Bachelor of Global Liberal Arts, but also about Ritz Amazing University itself. Thank you. My name is Tom Kanayama, just coming from Ritz-Mekan, Kyoto, Japan. Uh, the, our new campus uh, just uh, opened in uh, 2015. Uh, the Osaka campus is uh, still quite new. Uh, we, are, we have learned that the, uh, Osaka is the most livable city. Uh, first is uh, this year uh, Vienna, and the second Melbourne, and third Osaka. And we are located in just in between Osaka and Kyoto. So um, you will be excited just like being located in uh, Osaka, just between uh, uh, Osaka, Ibaraki is a kind of official name, just, just located in between Osaka and Kyoto. And this is, yeah. uh, our program, uh, yes, we are um, taking a part of a Bachelor of Global Middle Arts, and we have three pillars uh, cosmopolitan studies, learning uh, cultural and social. Uh, diversity, 
and the serialization and the standard historical transformation of sciences and societies and innovation studies and developing IT literacy plus creating new business models. Uh, this innovation studies includes internship, uh, for example, just, uh, just learning some culturally oriented uh, things, uh, for example, learning from the Japanese gardening, uh, of course, kind of a finance, uh, that's entities or organizations uh, during the uh, summer session. Uh, three peers plus, of course, as you will learn uh, anything just in uh, just uh, just being in Japan, so that we could Japanese studies cluster, just you could learn the contemporary Japan, modern history in Japan, Japan in global history, and Japanese philosophy. Uh, I really, uh, I'm very excited uh, just making a bridge uh, together uh, with Jeremy, that's ANU and with Mega University, uh, two degrees, uh, two double degree, or we should say at this moment a dual degree program. Uh, this is the uh, first trial in history in Australia, in Japan. So you are enrolled. Uh, this is the first in history, and you are the student, uh, the, the historical student, uh, first uh, with this historical attempt between Australia and Japan. Uh, next one is kind of our Japanese universities. Uh, some related information. Uh, that's a government uh, that's really just appreciate our attempt in a globalized education. And uh, the number is founded in uh, 1900, and uh, undergraduate college number, and graduate school, and all these things. And uh, it's like a university uh, that has some uh, kind of relationship regarding international students, uh, just students coming from all over the world. Uh, this is the campus. We have four campuses uh, locations. Uh, this is the uh, Suzaku campus. Is uh, our headquarters located? It's located. And um, Kinugasa campus, Osaka Ibara campus, Iwako Suzaku campus. This is a big lake near the big lake. Um, our global um, GRA, global liberal arts studies, uh, sure for staff. The 2019 uh, April here at Osaka. Um, the, uh, our campus and the characteristics is uh, focusing on Asia's gateway, urban coordination, regional cooperation. So you will not miss any kind of uh, atmosphere and opportunities uh, in uh, this campus. And then one of the alumni uh, highly appreciate uh, this historical attempt, so that uh, uh, he decided to donate to build international accommodation international house for this college student only. So um, you will surely uh, get the kind of opportunity to live in this newly opened, uh, supposedly just opened in uh, September 2019 uh, in this uh, accommodation on campus. I think that is it. We just want to give you a little bit of a, of a flavor there, but I'm sure there are lots of questions about this program, about the structure of it, or about some of the things you'll be studying. So we want to give you plenty of time to, to ask any questions. So if you do have questions, please raise your hand, and we will we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Wait, so like, do you do one year in Australia, then one in Japan, one in Australia, one in Japan? How do you, how, do, how is it divided? No, that, that's an excellent question. So the way it will be structured is that you'll do your first year. It, so if you start here in Australia, you'll do your first year here. You'll then do two years and in Japan, and then you'll come back and do your the fourth year here in Australia. So the first and fourth years would be here at the AMU campus. The second and third years would be in um, would be at OIC at the Woods Making Campus. Uh, how many students are you going to take? And what are the Sure, so for the, the number of students, um, the, the way that the, the program is structured, we can start 10 students each year here at, at the ANU. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Overall, there will also be 90 students that start in Japan with this program. So there'll be 100 students in each cohort of, of this program. 10 students, uh, up to 10 students can start here in Australia. 
Um, in terms of the, the admissions criteria, there's probably, Mary, can you speak a little bit to, to the admissions? So the, um, the ATAR requirement is 82 or 81 or 82. The Queensland uh, OB. Um, but because of the cap of enrollment numbers, that's the, that's the minimum requirement. But if there's a lot of um, higher results out there, then the final cut off might be a bit higher than that. But um, 82 is the, is the minimum requirement for an HR. Would it be ATAR based only or any other um, criteria that, 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 that is going to be considered in the, in the admission? Um, no, it'll, it'll be the academic. Um, there, there, there's, there's not going to be um, yeah, essay or that kind of submission. That, that's what you're asking, yeah. is it? Yeah. No, it'll be purely based on academic. Am I coming through? Yes. Love the concept. I have to ask the press question. Uh, how are we going to pay for this? Probably with money. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> no. No, so the, the program will actually, there, so, there's someone who can speak a little bit more to the, to the specifics of, of, of the finance. Um, so the, the program itself. Um, so students would be eligible for the same sorts of uh, opportunities that they would have when they're studying here at, at ANU, so the same sorts of financial supports. Um, we're looking at what we can do for those portions when students are studying at Japan, looking to see. So there is um, the opportunity for OS help, so the overseas component of, of um, the, the Australian government, that will provide some support for, I think, two of the semesters, and we're looking to see what other opportunities there might be for additional scholarships. Tess, do you want to? Centrelink will also um, pay while you're overseas, so you'll still get your Centrelink. So, so we're, and we're trying to see what we can do to, uh, to add additional scholarship opportunities for students, um, particularly for the photo portion while they're studying in Japan. So but that could be something like the mix. Yeah, 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 so we're looking at various things. We're having conversations actually yesterday to look at some of the other scholarship programs that, that exist and to see whether or not students would be eligible and how we can make sure that, um, that we increase as many opportunities as possible for students. Thank you. Yes, please. So is there any information yet on costs for the accommodation of how that will work and all that? So we have, um, there is a website through through Ritz and Aiken, and we will put that information on the, the, the website that ANU has so that, that you have links to it. Um, we have some estimated costs, and we are working to, to um, help to, to narrow that down so we can give you some more specific figures. But we'll put a link to the Ritz and Aiken website, uh, which will give you some of the information they have for international students and the, the cost expectations for accommodations. There will be guaranteed accommodations for students while they are studying at Ritz and Aiken. So you won't have, for the, for the two years, so you won't have to worry about trying to find your own accommodations. Um, but we'll give you that, that cost information and I guess we'll make, put a link on our website to, to the Ritz Making website for international students. Um, this is back to sort of admissions. So ATARs and stuff, they're only, uh, they're only sort of valid for two years. After that period, if say a student was to sign up for course, how would they get in? Uh, it depends what you've done
just for the course in Japan is in English. What are the job opportunities for with these combined with two degrees? And could you work in Japan with it if you don't have Japanese? Do you want to speak about the Japanese side of things? Yes. Um, in, in Japan, if you could get like an American opportunity, uh, sometimes you um, might be required, uh, just, uh, not required, but desired uh, to speak a little bit at the level of uh, Japanese, but uh, just, uh, Japanese big mega bank, and, uh, uh, for example, Japanese airline, just big one, and J JAL or AMA, and um, Tokyo uh, branch of the uh, international financial companies, um, uh, National Football League of Japan and the Tokyo branch and then uh, the presentation of Japan and uh, all these kinds. Uh, also, the Japanese related cultural historical internships will be uh, also available. Uh, so that uh, this, you can, uh, your uh, the children uh, can think about any kind of possibilities through all these kind of internship opportunities. I think. There's also, sorry, there's also an So you have up to 24 units of um, Japanese language courses that you can take if you want to. Sorry, I just clarify because you may not know the terminology. 24 units, so you're right. four subjects. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, upfront cost. Well, that is, so, what? We should be able to pay X. You just want to pay for the course. What's the cost of the course? Um, they're all banned on subjects. As to what that is, it's around, <laughs> from memory, 10,000 a year okay. is, is my recollection of what banned on. Uh, it's, it, it's under that, um, but I don't want to go too far. <laughs> I think it's around 8,000, but if you sort of budget at 10, <laughs> then you definitely cover it, but that's what band one um, under the hex is. After the degree, are you a postgraduate in Japan with the degree in uh, global liberal arts? You want to talk about postgraduate study in Japan after students complete this degree? Yes, at this moment, um, our global liberal arts uh, study are uh, only focusing on undergraduate study. Uh, but related uh, for further and then, uh, the study more in depth field, uh, we can advise you just domestically or internationally uh, due to the fact that we included the, all the kind of international globalized flavor of the faculty members uh, at our campus so that uh, you will not be uh, disappointed. The, uh, the intake of the 10th for next year, is that just where you're starting it to see how it goes, or is that what you intend the size of the intake to be ongoing? So that, that's the, the, our understanding of what the intake will be ongoing, uh, just because of the agreement that we have between Rick's Maiden and ANU in terms of the number of students that we can take and we can accommodate um, and make sure that we can do the, the accommodations guarantees. Um, we've got just one minute left, so we'll give you the last, the last word. How does school based adjustment factors play into acceptance? If you are eligible for adjustment factors, then they will be um, applied and that will give everyone a ranking and as long as that ranking is the equivalent of 82, you would be eligible for the, for the degree. 82 or above. Yes. Thanks guys, I'm sorry to interrupt. We're going to have to leave it there because we're under strict time control. But uh, we are all going to be in the post-graduate Pacific area. Uh, we imagine there's going to be many more questions about this program, so feel free to come and see us out there for the rest of the day. Thank you all so much for coming.